Now I'm going to go ahead and modify this uh, just to show you how the round trip works. This tag, this tag I just created, it's kind of called NAPTA Endpoint Control in the descriptor. I'm just going to call this, uh, you know, something that would be very obvious that I've made an edit. And the way I'm going to make, go ahead and, and modify this, first of all, I'm going to deselect these three tags here by simply taking those X's out. Now we also have a mechanism to do that automatically. If you go into this add-ins PySMT, you'll notice one of the options here is to select or deselect all of those tags. Anyway, I'll go ahead and deselect all those. And now I'll go ahead and select this one that I want to edit. So it's always a good idea to just select the ones that you are interested in editing. So that's the one I'm going to edit. And now I simply need to export this back to the Pi server. I'll go ahead and choose Export Tags. This gives us some choices here. Uh, we can specify what the point class is. Uh, if there are you know, other point classes you're working with, you do have to make sure you specify this properly, uh, both when you import and when you export. Now, this gives us the option here to create or edit. In this case, I'm going to be editing. You notice delete didn't show up there. That's that option that I disabled by ch changing the settings to disallow that. Anyway, so there's create or edit. If I were to choose create, then this would give me an error because uh, that tag already exists. If I were to choose edit, this would work just fine. Let me demonstrate what happens if I try to create it. As you can see, it says failed to create, tag already exists, right? Now, it's that error message that, that you just saw. It's that error message that we created this for, create or edit. Sometimes you're in the middle of editing dozens, hundreds of tags, and darn it, you've just forgotten which ones are brand new and which ones are tags you're editing. So we have this option here called Create or Edit that handles that situation. It's either going to create the tag if it doesn't exist or simply edit the tag if it does. Uh, I would stay away from that if you are purely doing editing. I mean, if you, if you genuinely think that you are editing existing tags, but you accidentally misspelled the name of a tag, if you're doing this, then you end up creating a tag by mistake. So I, I would always stick when you can to either one or the other. But we do have this in case you're in the middle of doing you know, a little of both. I'll go ahead and choose Edit, Export. We get a message that says this happened successfully. And if we go back and we take a look at this tag, as you can see, its descriptor has been changed for me. Now, it's required when using SMT that this, re this reserved word, tag, always appears in column B in cell 1. So it's always cell B1. Uh, that's a requirement. Other than that, you simply have to put in row one all of the attributes that you're interested in retrieving. Now, we just did this initially uh, by doing kind of the sledgehammer approach. We brought in every single attribute. Let me show you how we could have done this a little more selectively. I could just type in tag, zero, span, some attributes like this, and then done a retrieval uh, based, on, um, based on some tag names that I've specified right here. So if I say, well, we're looking at sinusoid, and CD2158 and ACDM158, the one I just created. Let me add a couple more, point type, etc. What, what I've done by doing this is simply prep this for doing an import. So if I choose import now, as we saw that option before, do we want to retrieve the tag and attributes on the spreadsheet or all the attributes that meet a certain mask? Well, we just demonstrated that. That showed you the sledgehammer approach. Here, we're going to be more selective. So if I do that, oh, I forgot. And I'm, you know, I, I, that was embarrassing, but I, it is actually the single most common mistake that we see in our class. I forgot to select any tags, but thankfully our developers have seen this enough. We've gotten enough feedback saying this is a big mistake that happens a lot. So we're saying, hey, dummy, you forgot to select any tags. Do you want to import everything? Yes, I do. And as you can see, it went ahead and did that. Yeah, I wish I could say I did that intentionally. But that, that went out, grabbed these tags, these attributes. Any other thing that I'd like to see, I'd like to look at the exception deviation, the compression deviation. You know, all of these things I can do just by typing in those names. There we go. Now, it's going to get really tiresome trying to remember the names of all these attributes. So thankfully, we do have a mechanism for that. If you go into PySMT, one of the options here is Tag Attributes. So you can simply choose what you want to see. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at the descriptor. And I'll look at the point source. And I'll look at location code 2, 4, and 5. 
Now this is going to bring these in starting with whatever column you currently selected. So it's column H. This is going to bring them in and it's going to put them not in the order you selected them in, but it's going to put them in alphabetical order. Just sometimes a disappointment to people. They would prefer to have it in a certain order, but it's always going to drop that in there in alphabetical order. So now that we've brought those in, now we can do another import. I'll go ahead and import this. And now I've got yet more attributes I have to look at. Now, if that really annoyed you, the fact that this came in not in the order that you picked them in, that's no problem. Just go ahead and copy this. Just store this somewhere. Uh, move these where you wanted them. I'll go ahead and copy this over here. Paste it right there. I'll grab these. You know, you're working in Excel. All the things that you typically do in Excel you can do here. Now that I put them in the new location, just go ahead and import again. And we'll just go ahead and find what those attributes are and we'll bring it in. We'll even change the column width for you. Yeah, so as you can see, the only real restriction is tag has to be in column B. Everything else can be in whatever order you prefer. Now finally, we always recommend that you do not keep any empty tag attributes sitting up here. And by empty, I mean where you're not actively configuring them. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say you've got a tag attribute here called, well, display digits. Remember that one? That's how we specify how many significant digits or de decimal places we display in Process Book. But let's say that you've gone to the, all the trouble of setting these up individually. I want th one decimal place here, two decimal places here, zero decimal places here. A and I've done this very diligently. I exported this, modified this. If we, if we were to bring this back in, if I import this again, let me just delete all this to show you that it's actually doing something. If I import, leaving the tag names, as you can see, that edit that I just did, that edit is working. Well, let's say you come in the next day and you accidentally, even though you're not busy editing these, you accidentally put that display digits up at the top there. Watch what happens the next time I export. Because this is empty. If I export, it's going to take all that good configuration you did and it's going to overwrite it with zeros. So I'll go ahead and export this. If I were to import this back in, as you can see, these values now are coming back as zero. And, and that's the problem. So for that reason, we always suggest if you're not actively editing things, you know, once you've got this the way you want, I got it one digit, two digits, and zero digits. Once you've got that that way, let me go ahead and export that. Yeah, then if you're not, you know, if it's the next day and you're working with this, these tags, don't keep that display digits up there if you're not interested in making edits to that. It's, you know, the, the possibility that you accidentally delete those or accidentally change them and then propagate that into the database is something that, you know, it's the kind of problem that can end up taking a while to figure out what happened. So watch out for that. Now, lastly, we have these fields called XDEV and COMPDEV that stands for the exception deviation and the compression deviation. It has to do with how we store data on the archive. Uh, and we also have something called XDEV percent and COMPDEV percent. Let me show you what those look like. I'll go out and grab them from here. Now, the XDEV percent and COMPDEV percent are modifying the same attribute, but they're doing it using percent of range instead of a straight engineering units. Now, because these two attributes here are essentially two different ways of modifying the same, uh, the same attribute, the, the deviation span, this in engineering units, these two, and this in percent of range, then, well, they're mutually exclusive. If you have both of them up on the screen at the same time and you edit uh, one of them and then you export, well, one of them is going to have to take precedence. Now, we've chosen XDEV percent. So if you have both of them on the screen, you know, this in engineering units and percent, the percent will supersede. So let me just give you a scenario or show you a scenario where you can lose a lot of work pretty quickly. I'll go ahead and import this so that you can see what the XDEV percent and COMPDEV percent are. I'll scroll over here. As you can see, uh, these are both at 2% and 1% for XDEV percent and COMPDEV percent, right? Well, let's say you've sat down with your engineering team, all your engineers. You figured out what the very best deviations are for storing, you know, for deciding how much data you're going to store and what data you're going to consider line noise. Uh, and you've determined one by one, you've said, okay, this is 0.2 and I'm going to make this 0.4. You've gone through and you've made all these adjustments. This is 0.5, this is 1, uh, etc. This is 0.666. Anyway, so you've gone to all the trouble to do this. 
and then you export this, but you haven't removed these from the spreadsheet. Well, as I said, this and this, the xdev and xdev percent, sorry, they're not really lined up there, right? xdev and xdev percent are both uh, modifying the same attribute. Compdev and compdev percent are both modifying the same attribute. If I were to export this with everything on there, the xdev percent and compdev percent will take precedence. And so when we export this, it made the edit when I import this back in. As you can see, uh, we've lost all that good work we were doing over here. And that's because we had this sitting here on there at the same time. So the better technique is if you're going to be making modifications to this. You know, you've sat down, you've come up with some good numbers. Let's do this again. If you need to edit these two fields, always make sure you remove these from the spreadsheet. I'll just go ahead and click on delete. Now I'll export. Export those tags. Now, actually, I can put these back, these xdev and xdev percent. And uh, if we bring them back in, you'll see that th this time it actually did take. So if I go into tag attributes, I'll bring these back in. This is compdev percent and xdev percent. If I import this, okay, so as you can see, this time it worked. We didn't have that problem we saw before. So be careful uh, when you're editing these, if you're editing either of these, just keep the one that you're editing on the spreadsheet and delete the other one. Now, lastly, if you do need to change the name of a tag, you can actually do this from here. Let me go ahead and get rid of all this. Let's say I do need to change the name of this tag. Uh, if I wanted to change it, I would simply use the new tag attribute. Uh, so put the old tag name, put the new tag name. I'll call this my sinusoid. I'll go ahead and export this. That's essentially going to rename that tag. So here's before and after. This is what the tag looks like now. I'll go ahead and export this. And now if we take a look at this, let's see, can I refresh this? Yeah, as you can see, it's got a new name, my sinusoid. Now remember, when you re do rename a tag, uh, there are a number of things that are going to break. You're going to break ACE calculations, you're going to break performance equations and data link spreadsheets because those all refer to these by their tag names, not by their internal IDs. Process book should be okay because process book refers to this by its internal ID instead.